Uh, what's up everybody and welcome to my Hell in a Cell 2015 review. And uh, I guess before we start anything off, let's kind of get through the pre-show match of Cesaro Neville and Dolph Ziggler versus Sheamus Rusev and Barrett. Pretty much Neville and them getting up the win, which was a really good match. It was the pre-show match. I mean, usually a lot of these matches don't go nowhere, but it was alright and... Pretty much Neville hit the swing. I mean, um, Cesaro hit the swing with the uh, elb with those uppercuts, and Neville hit the red arrow and won the match. I wasn't mad at that. That was good. But we kicked it off with the John Cena open challenge, as he was ready to. It was open challenge. He's the man to beat. Who was going to do it? But um, Zeb Coulter came out, thinking on a motorized scooter. Since I thought Coulter came out, I thought Jack Swagger was going to come out. But the surprising person that came out of this match was Alberto Del Rio, which I'm very surprised at Del Rio coming out. And getting through the match was very quick, number one. The match went on like seven minutes. I don't know if he got bitched out, I don't think he got a job, but he, I know he was going to be taking some time off. But how the way he lost, clean might I say, but all the other guys he's winning against it took a whole bunch of time. And he still beat them, but it took Del Rio very quickly to win. Just with a kick and a backstabber. And I don't know, they're all cool now. Um, Del Rio and Coulter after the whole, well, I don't like the Mexicans and all this stuff. And I, let me give my honest opinion about this whole Alberto Del Rio Patron thing coming back. It may look good now. Okay, but this is the problem with it. Well, yes, we know what happened to Del Rio when he got fired from this company because of the racist stuff went on. And I don't know what kind of deal they settled, or maybe they did fire the racist dude, but did Del Rio really need to come back to WWE? Some people thought it was going to be a new NXT guy coming in. Do I think he made the right choice coming back? Because if you look at the indie scene and what he was doing, he was killing it in Ring of Honor. He was killing it in Lucha Underground. He was killing in AAA. If you don't believe me, go look at Lucha Underground, Ultima Lucha, uh, Johnny Mundo, whatever, John Morrison versus Alberto El Patron. And you can't say I was one half of a match. I'm sure Lucha Underground and them were pissed because um, I think that guy messed up their whole plans with Dario going back to um, WWE, which it shocks me in a way, but how long will this go? Some people are giving it a month because. They say he was like Mexican Sheamus. What the hell was Dario to do in the last time he was here? He was either being jobbed everybody or um, he was either being jobbed everybody going against Sheamus. I don't know how many matches, almost a thousand. Um, going against Orton multiple times, going against Ziggler multiple times. But it, I, I just questioned it. I'm surprised he won the belt that quick. Okay, it's like Cena was like, all right, let me get my paycheck and get the hell out of here pretty much since, you know. He wasn't going to be there for, for long anyway. He's supposed to be taking time off. But I, I was very surprised at the outcome of this. I was surprised that Dario came out. And it wasn't like a big pop like thing. It was just a little somewhat shocking. But I don't know how long Dario is long for this company. I don't know how this second run will go. I feel like it may go kind of flat. Especially with this whole, you know, thing. Because you look at Dario's Delta, WWE style moveset. And you look at his style he had in Ring of Honor and stuff, it's a whole different style. Okay, like, it's a very different thing. So I just, I don't know why he went back, though. And maybe they came up with a better deal, and some people want to say, oh, Triple H, just you can get everybody back in the company one way or another. But the way that happened to the Rio was how he was fired from this company was fucked up because of the whole racist thing. And he had every right to slap the living hell of that, out of that dude, but... I, I just don't know why he came back to WWE. Like, I, to be honest, I like them more in any scene than I like them WWE. Because I feel like we're going to see the same shit over and over and over. Like, I'm going to give it a chance, maybe a few weeks. But I just feel like we're going to see the same stuff over. Like, El Patron, I was a big fan of it. I checked it out. I was like, my God, why couldn't he do this shit in WWE? And I was a bigger fan over there. He was, like, good because you've seen him bash the company and everything. I don't know if he's a sellout on that. Some people think he may have did it for the money, which I couldn't be surprised if it was for the money. But I thought he was doing all right, living out of there, living off. 
going all over the world still wrestling and getting big pops and stuff but I, I don't know how why I, I don't know what this is why he came back to WWE but it was surprising though and I some say is LA is more the Latin market over there they said even Lucha on the ground but it's kind of I would see the version because two years ago they faced for the World Heavyweight Championship and then another two years back from that 2011 it was him Cena and Punk in a Hell in a Cell match at Hell in a Cell so it's almost like they faced every two years Hell Cena returned two years ago, won the World Heavyweight Championship. This year, two years later, um, Dario comes back and wins the United States Championship. So it's it's very, very surprising to went down tonight. I was very shocked at that. And I, it just it was odd because I've, I've said before, I was more of a bigger fan of him on the indie scene. I really was. And I'm very surprised he came back to this company. So... I don't know what to expect out of this. I don't know how it will go. Time will tell. I think it's odd still kind of that he's with Coulter after, you know, we've seen what's gone down with them. But, I don't know. It's like the match was alright, but I feel like it was rushed. It felt forced. Uh, Seth Rollins, once again, arguing with Kane in the back or Corporate Kane. About this whole, you know, who's gonna win this, who's gonna win that. Match tonight for the title. Uh, Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt in a Hell in a Cell match. Um, oh my god, what can I say about this? Good match, I'll say that. Not great, but good. I think it was a good match. Even though I feel like they barely used more Hell in a Cell and they keep using table after table after table, it was a good match. Some people got weirded out by, um, uh, Bray Wyatt putting those two kendo sticks at the um, um, at the um, turnbuckle, one in the middle, one second on top. Some people say he was going some American horror story, sexual torture thing they were saying, but I didn't know where it was going to go. But I feel like it was more of a street fight. Like I said, they barely use Hell in a Cell nowadays, to be honest. It's more of a street fight where everybody gets a weapon and stuff. Hell in a Cell is just there. Yeah, you can bounce off the cage here and there, but. Nothing's gonna happen really. And pretty much Reigns won, hit the spear, so I'm not really surprised that he won. Um The New Day came out with the trombone and a promo talking about uh Xavier Woods and holding the unicorns in the air and stuff and him dim biggie dancing as they both went against Team 3D for the titles again. Which, uh, once again, they've lost and did an Eddie Guerrero spot by throwing the trombone at Bully Ray or Bubba Ray. And pretty much Kofi just laid down. They all like it was Eddie, but I guess they weren't going to go at that finish, so the match kept going. Pretty much a Big E hitting Bubba Ray with a, uh, Bully Ray with a trombone from the back, taking him down. Kofi picked up the win. He was from Paradise. From Paradise. They hit the win. And, I don't know, they said that the first thing they did was kind of messed up the move with Team 3 did. And I almost feel like they're just there now. I don't even know they're going to win the titles or not. If they do, I guess. But I feel like they faced them, like, what, three, maybe four times now for the Tag Team Championships. And they still haven't won yet. It's almost like the, the like, Dudleys are just there. Like, Team 3 is just there right now. You're just there. You're kind of just like any other type of guy right now. And I think they're just kind of losing some, they're losing steam. So, how many times will they face them? Charlotte versus Nikki Bella for the t uh, women's title, Divas title. I couldn't have cared less. I'm surprised they had much time out there. Um, pretty much. I don't think that I guess what was good was Charlotte doing that backflip, dodging her German with the backflip. She kind of almost crashed and burned a little, but she recovered and pretty much hit the figure eight, won in the, winning the match. And I, just, I still think they're not good as the NXT women's matches, but. It was whatever, whatever. Pretty much Paige, some reason, came out and celebrated. So there even a lot of Paige out there. She's against them, or she's with them, or I still think Paige is heel, or whatever. Or, I don't know, tweener, some say CM Punk tweener type of thing. So I don't even know what to say about that. 25 years of The Undertaker's coming up at uh, Survivor Series this year. 25 years of The Dead Man. Uh, Dean Ambrose came and congratulated Roman Reigns, saying, like, let's go get a beer, man. Let's celebrate and stuff. Several rounds when he came for the title, which was probably one of the worst matches out there tonight. 
pretty much how the house affects authority. Pretty much Kane would he didn't even go through the Spanish and I said when Ron to power bomb on him. And then like Ron just hit a series of moves. Kane tried to get back out and choke slam, but Ron's dodge to hit the pedigree won the match. So it's like who who almost cared about this match to be honest. I don't even think the fans were they were with Kane maybe a little, but I don't think he was gonna win or anything. Or how his directive operations thing go, which you can just reapply as Demon Kane if Corporate Kane's gone. Uh, Roman Reigns, I uh, Roman Reigns up. Uh, Kevin Owens was right back for the I I the Intercontinental title, the IC belt. It was probably one of the worst matches on the card also. Nobody was really behind right back. People mostly cared about Kevin Owens. And it was really quick, but it was probably one of the worst matches of the night. They had a tough spot in there. I don't think people cared. People booed it right back. They were with Kevin Owens pretty much all the way. Owens hit the pop-up power bomb. Won the match, so I'm not very surprised at that match. It, it just sucked. It sucked. Once they, when you threw a match, a couple of matches together, it sucked. But as we get into the main event, Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker and a Hell in a Cell match, which is probably maybe pretty much the best match on this show tonight. The best match out of everybody. Why even Brock Lesnar was bleeding under a mi couple minutes or two once his head hit the steel post. Hell, Brock even hit Taker with a hard way punch right there, so he was bleeding hard way. And they would, and some people are like, Hell in a Cell matches be like this. Even though I still figure it's a street fight with Steel Steps getting involved. People saying it was like a bit of a CZW spot when Undertaker lifted his feet to knock the steps on uh, Brock's head. St even ripping up the ring mat a lot. Glad I was talking to somebody. They pointed out that it was a little bit like TNA when Bully Ray was pulling up the ring mat going against Sting. So they kind of did that there. And there's also a lot of chair shots and everything, but it, sh it sure as hell wasn't no bleeding, they said. They say Lesnar suffered nine staples to his head. Or stitches, but throughout the match, it was pretty much getting good, really good, um, from choke slams to tombstone to an F5 suplex. It's all over as Brock said, suplex city bitch. But Taker pretty much came back and did his little throw thing to um, Lesnar while he was on his knees. But I guess Lesnar got the quote unquote payback. Pretty much hitting Undertaker with a low blow to the nuts since Undertaker loves, Undertaker loves kicking people in the nuts nowadays since he's kind of healed for some reason. Brock pretty much did that, low blowed him, hit him with the um, F5 win in the match, which I'm not mad at all the way. It could have been a cleaner finish, but hell, it makes sense. Undertaker was hitting everybody else in the nuts. Why can't somebody else hit him in the nuts? But. Brock won the match, which I'm somewhat surprised and skeptical on that. Like, it's like, damn, is Undertaker ever going to beat Brock Lesnar, I feel like, at this point? And Undertaker pretty much, everybody cheered his name. He did his signature thing when he pretty much does that thing on his knee and stuff. As the, cran get, the crowd gave him a standing ovation. ovation. But here's where the weird part comes in. The Wyatt family comes out. And they pretty much beat the living hell out of the Undertaker. What's left of him. And carry him to the back. I thought they were going to make a part of the Wyatt family. And they wonder what did they do with the Undertaker. Where did they put him and stuff. They just beat him up and carried him. And the fact that nobody even come out and help Undertaker. No Kane. No Shield 2.0 of Ambrose and Rain. So I was very surprised. Nobody did not come to Dead Man. And that's for the Bray Wyatt thing. We know how these feuds work with him. It's like I, I was reading something earlier tonight. They were saying uh, Bray Wyatt eats, sleep. Um, attack, randomly attack somebody, explain your actions, lose the feud, and you'll repeat it all over again. You just go against, randomly attack somebody, you'll give your reason the next night, you'll lose the entire feud when it gets to the final stretch, and then you'll do it with the next person. Say, why are you lying? Why are you lying to these people? Why are you lying? You're lying. You's a liar. And... I don't know what gonna, the direction's going to go Bray Wyatt. I guess it'll be a Survivor Series. I still feel like it will, but it'll be Undertaker, Kane, Ambrose, and Reigns versus the entire Wyatt family. That's why people will go down to Survivor Series. So, the pay per is really, I guess, good tonight. The only really good match people really want to check out is the Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar and Hell in a Cell match. If you want to see Del Rio, I guess, for shock value, you can check that out. I wasn't really that impressed with it that much of how someone he won, but... Let's give Del Rio some time, and maybe he'll go somewhere. I still think he was better on the indie scene. I still think he should have went back for season two of Lucha Underground. But I, I guess we'll just have to deal with this back in him in WWE, and maybe he'll go somewhere. Like I'm pretty much gonna say a lot more thoughts on Raw about this also.
because it's like we've seen him fail already so why are we trying to recycle this thing all over again but most of the show kind of really wasn't that good and like I said main event was really good if you want to see that real for shock value go ahead and watch and I guess the other Hell in a Cell match was good also Reigns vs Wyatt it was a pretty decent match. Like I said, it could have been better, but I felt like it's a lot of table spots. And I guess people would want to, like, Team 3D send it back. Like, what the hell are we going to do now to use up all the table spots? What the hell are we going to do? So, what were they going to do with that plan? But, pretty much, um, Hell in a Cell. Like I said, a decent enough pay-per-view. Decent to good. Barely even decent, damn, yeah. It was just too much of bad things going on throughout the show. And then really didn't get good until the main event of the show. But uh, live reactions, they're up right now. They're already posted. Check it out if you can. Check out this review. This is Review Hell in a Cell 2015, folks. Tell me what you thought about it. Live reactions. Check out the reaction to them also. And tell us, give your comments, concerns, anything about what happened on the show tonight. So I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.